Check your oxygen reserves. Don't forget your selfie stick. Strap yourself in and prepare yourself for blast off because today you're on your way to Mars. Hello everyone. Welcome to Gaming Solo. I'm Rob, your solo gamer friend, and today we're playing Pocket Mars. Designed by, I'm not going to try to say that name because I'll mess up and same goes for the artist. But if you look at your screen, you'll see who they are. And it's published by Gray Fox Games. So I hope you like freeze-dry food and no privacy because you're going to get plenty of one and none of the other as you join me in today's playthrough. The area is set up and ready for play. The top left corner you have Earth where the colonists are waiting to be launched into space. The top right corner you have are your draw piles and eventually be the discard pile. The row of cards beneath those two are the habitat modules that are beyond Mars. The first habitat module is the greenhouse. The greenhouse allows you to move one colonist from a one star location to a two star location. Or you can move the autonomous colonist from a two star location to a one star location in any building of your choice. How you identify one star and two star locations on every card with the exception of the habitation module are one star and a two star side. You can put as many colonists in one star, but you can only put one colonist and a two star on each of the modules. The next module down is your aqua lab. The Aqua Lab allows you to take one card from your hand or prep module and put it at the bottom of the deck. The card next to that is the Energy Bank. The Energy Bank allows you to gain one energy on your spaceship. The next card after that is the Comm Center. The Comm Center allows you to launch one colonist from Earth to your ship. And finally, you have the Habitation Module, the black card. Habitation Module you cannot occupy with colonists. But it does, anytime you place a card there, you can move one of your colonists from your ship to a building of your choice. Bottom left are, and right are the rocket ships. For the player, I will start with one colonist on my ship. The Automa starts with five colonists on his ship. Both of us have a marker set on the one energy level mark. This game does not have rounds, but instead will end off of one of three in-game conditions. Condition one is if the Automa puts all seven of their colonists in the habitats. Condition two is if you put all seven of your colonists in the habitats. And condition three is if the refill deck runs out and you cannot put two cards back in the Automa's hand, then the game is over and you go into scoring round. At the start of the game, you deal yourself four cards and you deal the Automa two cards. The Automus two cards will go face down into their prep module location and stay there. Then you look at your cards and you have to make a decision on which two cards you're going to keep and which two you're going to lay into your prep module location. Cards put into the prep module location cannot go back into your hand. But before you make that decision, you must understand the anatomy of a card. I want to use this blue number five card to help explain it. So first of all, you look at the color of the card. The color of the card can only be played on the habitat of that similar color. Second, you look at the numeric value. When you play that card, it must exceed the numeric value of the card previously played before it, or if there are not any cards there, then the habitat's numeric value. If you exceed that number, then you're allowed to take colonists from your ship and place them into that habitat. If you do not exceed that value, then you cannot place colonists into that habitat. Then uh, underneath that card, you see, you see two sections, a section with the hand symbol and a section representing the prep module. If you kept the card in your hand, then you play the top action. When you play that top action, you discard the card. It does not go to the, into the habitats. If you play the card from your prep module, then you play it into the habitat of its color. That's when you can activate that habitat and take that habitat's actions along with the card actions. And like I said, if you've exceeded the numeric value of the previously card plate or the habitat, then you can launch a colonist from your ship onto the habitat as long as there's a colonist there. And that is how these cards work. These cards are actually called project cards throughout the game. Okay, we're ready to play. First thing I do is deal four cards to myself and two cards to the Automa. The Automa's official name in this game is actually called the Devious Automatic, or DA for short. So I'm going to start referring to it as DA. When you lay the DA's cards out, they go face down because it's the color of the card that dictates the DA's actions. Then I look at my cards and I decide what two I'm going to keep in my hand and what two I'm going to put in the prep module. The cards that have been dealt to me are the Habitation card, Numeric value of zero because you cannot put a colonist in the habitation 
on the habitation card. If I play this card from my hand, I gain two energy. If I play this card from the prep module, I can spend the energy and look at the DA's prep module cards to see what he has that I could use to my advantage. The next card I received is the comm center card, numeric value of seven. If I play this from my hand, then I can launch two colonists from Earth to my ship. If I play this card from the prep module, I can launch one colonist from Earth as long as I have a comm center card in my hand. The third card I was dealt is the Aqualab card, numeric value of one. If I play this card from my hand, I can launch one colonist from Earth and gain one energy. If I play this from the prep module, then if the Aqualab building does not have one of my colonists in it, then I can launch two colonists from Earth onto my ship. And the final card that was dealt to me is the energy bank card. This played from my hand will allow me to draw two cards in the draw pile, look at them both, keep one, and put the other one faced out underneath the habitat it belongs to. Or if I play it from the prep module, I can gain two energy and its numeric value is two. So I think I want to put colonists on my ship as soon as possible and I want to gain energy. So I'm going to play my energy bank card and my Aqualab card into the prep module and keep the other two cards into my hand. And now that I have that decided what's going to go where, this round is done in three phases. Phase one is called the architect phase. And for the architect phase, I have one of five options I can take. I can play a project card from my hand. I can play a project card from my prep module. I can play a project card from the DA's prep module. Or I can launch one colonist from Earth to my ship and discard a project card from the DA's prep module. Or I can discard a card from my hand or my prep module to gain two energy. And I think right now I'm going to play my comm center card and earn two of my colonists launch them from Earth to the ship. And now that that's almost the end of my turn, the final action of my turn is I have to draw a card, but I cannot draw it from the draw pile. I must draw it from the DA's prep modules. So color is important. Right now they're both black, so it doesn't matter what I get. But when you look at this, based upon the color, the DA takes those actions. And so sometimes you might want to take a color not because you need it, but because you want the DA, don't want the DA to take that action associated with that color. So right now it doesn't matter, so I'm going to grab black, the habitation card, and put it into my hand. And the card that I grab from them is, if I play it from my hand, I can take a card of my choice from the discard pile and put it into my hand. If I play it from a prep module, if I had the space or if I was able to switch it out, then I can spend three energy to move one of my colonists from a ship to a building of my choice. And that ends my turn. The next turn we have is what we call the system failure phase. And the system failure phase, all it is is you burning two cards and put them in the discard pile, kind of speeding time up. Because I said, when this is empty, then the game is over, or when all seven colonists from either player is on, is on Mars, the game is over. Then after you finish the system failure phase, you do the Android activation phase. This is where the Automa comes into play. You gotta look at what the Automa has. If the Automa has two cards in their prep module still, they do not take an action. If the Automa has zero cards in the prep module, it does not take action, but it does refill back to two cards from the draw pile. But because there's one card here, it takes an action. And the Automa always gets two actions. The first action is it will always launch a colonist from its ship onto a habitat. Now, since it can't go to a black habitat, it gets to go to the habitation card. It gets to go to a card of my choice. Now, the rules state I should make the best decision for the DA. So I'm going to put it right here on the greenhouse because it really doesn't matter. There's nothing out there yet. And then I take the action of the card. And each card has their own action associated with them. So if I had the greenhouse card sitting there, then the Automa can move its colonists from a one-star location to a two-star location, or it can move my colonists from a two-star location to a one-star location. 
If I had an Aqualab card there, then it can take two cards from the project deck, or from, the pro from this deck, and discard them. If the energy bank card was there, then I can increase the DA's energy level by two. Unless it's maxed out, then I must discard two cards from the draw pile. If there was a comm center card there, then I can move one DA colonist from Earth to the ship. And right now the habitation card is sitting there. So I move one DA from a spaceship to a building of my choice. If there are no DA on the ship, then I move one from the Earth to the ship. If they can't take either action because they're either all there, then the game is over anyways. It doesn't matter. So this will go here. And that then you finally, once you make that last action, you refill the DA's prep module, and that is the end of the first turn. Before I go any further, let me explain in-game scoring so you understand the logic behind the decisions I'll make for placing colonists between myself and the DA. Each team scores one point for every colonist they have on their ship. They will score two points for each colonist they have in a one-star location and four points for each colonist they have in a two-star location. If I have the highest amount of energy, I will score one point. If the DA has the highest amount of energy, it will score two points. If there's a tie, I will get one point, the DA will get two points. If I have one colonist in each of the four habitats, I will get two points. If the DA has one colonist in each of the four habitats, it gets four points. If I'm able to get four colonists in one habitat, I will earn three points. If the DA is able to get four colonists in one habitat, it gets five points. And that's how the scoring for the end of the game works. Now we got that out of the way with, I want to, the card I want to play is the one I took from the DA. This is the one that allows me to discard a card and place a discarded card into my back into my hand. So I want to discard this card and I'm going to place the comms card back into my hand that allows me to get two more colonists from Earth onto my ship. That's the end of my turn. I have four cards. So I do not need to get any cards from the DA's prep module. We go to system failure phase. We burn two cards. The DA cannot play because he has two cards still in his prep module. So he misses his turn. Same rule applies if he has zero cards in his prep module. So the DA does not complete any colonists or does not get to play a card. So I get my turn again. I'm going to play my comms card again and I'm going to get two colonists from Earth and put them on my ship. Now I have to take a card from the DH prep module to give up to four cards. I'm going to take its habitation card because it, the habitation card that's, it gives the opportunity to place a total two colonists out on that round. I don't want that to happen. With the energy card, or the energy card just allows the DA to move a, I'm not the energy card, but the comms card allows the DA to move one colonist from Earth to its ship. So now we go to system failure, burn two more cards. DA gets to place a colonist on the habitat. And because it has the comms card, it gets to bring a colonist to the ship. The card I took from the DA is for the habitat. If I play it from my hand, I get to switch one of the cards on my hand with one of the cards in the prep module. If I play it from a prep module, I can use one energy to launch one colonist from Earth to my ship. And so that's how that works. I need to replay, replenish the DA's card there. I'm going to play this. I'm going to switch these cards out, this card with from the prep module with that card to put into my hand. And I think I'm going to do the aqua habitat for this. I have four cards on my hand, so I do not need to uh, draw any more cards from the DH prep module. I burn two more cards for the system failure phase. The DA misses another turn because he still has two cards there, so I get to go again. I'm going to use the habitat prep module. I'm going to place it here and it allows me to use one energy to launch one colonist from Earth. And I get to take the habitat action, which I can move a colonist from my ship and place on the building of my choice. And I think I'm going to put it right here. And now I have to draw a card from 
the DA, so I'm going to take uh, this columns card. This columns card is a numeric value of 1. It allows me, from my hand, I can take one colonist from Earth and gain one energy. Or if I put it in the prep module, if the comms ability does not have any of my colonists, I can launch two from Earth. Comms ability has a colonist, so it's probably best to keep this in my hand. And I will put the... I'll put this habitat card into the prep module, which allows me to look at the DA's prep cards if I use it for one energy. Burn through two more cards. The, the DA gets to launch another colonist, and then he gets to get another colonist from Earth to his ship, and then we replenish the prep module, and it's my turn again. And I think I'll play my comms card in my hand, which allows me to take one columns from Earth and gain one energy. So now Earth is empty, and I'm back up to one energy. And I think I'm going to take... I'm going to take the greenhouse card, because if I leave it there, the DA can put one of its colonists into a two-star location. And I'm trying to reduce the amount of points it can get from me. I burn through two cards. The DA puts a colonist on the habitat. It has one in every habitat, so now it's going to work on the second bonus of so getting four colonists in one habitat. And there are no more colonists on Earth, so I cannot bring any to the ship. So he misses that turn, and we replenish his cards. I'm going to play my greenhouse card in my hand and I can move one colonist from my ship to the greenhouse building. So it puts one there. I draw a card from the DA. I'm grabbing the other greenhouse card, numeric value 6. I can move a colonist from my ship to a building of my choice and if I put it into the prep module, I can move a colonist from a two star to a one star location in any building and gain four energy. I think I'm going to keep my hand because it doesn't make sense. I don't have any two star location, but I wouldn't want to lose those points just for four energy. Burn through two more cards. The DA has to put a colonist on the, in the habitat and I cannot take this action because like I said it moves a colonist from Earth to the ship. There are no columns on Earth, so it's stuck there. And now it's down to one colonist left on its ship, so this might be the last turn. So I'm going to play I'm going to play my greenhouse card where I can move one colonist from a ship to a building of my choice. Put it there. I'm going to grab the I'm grab the energy card from the DA because uh, it can burn two cards with the greenhouse card. No, grab the greenhouse card because with the energy it can't do anything again. Turn game's going to be over real quick, but that's about it. And this card, the greenhouse card, is numeric value two. Draw two cards, keep one of them and add the other face down to a corresponding building or I can from prep module launch one from Earth. So that's it right there for me. Burn through two more cards. The DA gets its action and that is the end of the game. That's how quickly the game goes. This is one of those lunchtime games you can probably get two or three in if you have a long enough lunch time. And now we'll go into in-game scoring. One point for every colonist on a ship, so I have four points. Two points for every colonist in a one-star location, so now I have ten points. Uh, one point for the most energy. I'm tied, so I get one point, so I have a total of 11 points. The DA gets has, doesn't have any on the ship. It gets two points for every colonist in a one-star location. That gives it 14 points. It gets four points for having a colonist on each of the five habitats. That gives it 
18 points and another 5 points for having 4 colonists in one location. That gives it 23 points plus 2 points for tie for the most injury. Ener energy gives it 25 points versus my um, 11 po 10 points or 11 points. So DA beat me by a whole lot. And that's how the game is played. So Pocket Mars, I like it. It's a fun game. Um, it's quick and pl it's quick for play. Maybe about ten minutes for playing solo because the cards go quick. The Automa has the advantage. That's the one thing I kind of don't like about the, the point rolls is you didn't have to beef up the Automa on their extra point rolls for having four habitats and and uh, four in one because if you have to play it where you have to make the best decision for the Automa, it's going to score those points. Uh, it still would have kicked my butt without those additional two points for this and two points for that. It still would have won easily. But for the most part, I like the game. The artwork is great. The the habitat artwork is, is nice. The spaceship artwork is really nice. But what I like best about it was the project cards. And if you took a project cards, like let's say you take all the blue Aqua Lab project cards and lay them out in numerical order and look at the blueprints on those cards, you could see the each each numerical value, the blueprint increased in complexity it would add more like they took a base blueprint added that blueprint from number two above number one and you're seeing you're actually seeing the habitat designed on the blueprint from beginning to end from one through seven on the cards so whoever thought of that I kudos to you that was great uh, it was really smart and it brought some extra interest to the the game setup time takes about two minutes once you know what you're doing you set up real two minutes it's a small box easy to travel. You could fit this box in your backpack and not even remember it's there. It's that light and that small. You can probably put it in the small pouch of your backpack and keep going. Um, really nice storage compartments in there. It's just two compartments, one side for cards, one side for your pieces and just get a little baggie to bag them in and it's they stay they stay where they're supposed to be at. This game is complex enough to cause you to go back to the rule books uh, two or three times but that's you know if you play this enough time once you understand the rules, it's hard to forget. It's quick and easy. Uh, it's just going back trying to figure out if the Automa, if this happens to the Automa, what happens next. So it's just minor stuff like that. It can be going back to the rule book. But other than that, I really enjoyed it. I would recommend this game to anyone who's looking for a small game that can travel, that's quick play, set up. Like I said, no dice rolling. It's legitimately card flipping and playing the cards you have in your hand or your prep modules or even playing the Automa's prep modules. I did not reach into the Automa's prep module to look at one of their cards to play. Um, that was an option I could have used and never did it. Um, but, you know, it's something you can do. So it is definitely a fun, enjoyable game. I'd like to thank you for joining me here at Gaming Solo. It's truly appreciated. If you like the playthroughs that Gaming Solo is producing, then it would be greatly appreciated if you would give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button at the bottom right corner. Also, when you get the opportunity, visit the Facebook page, The Solo Board Gamers. You can find the link in the description below. It's a great group of people. They all love solo board gaming, and they have all kinds of ideas and concepts. You have creators on there. You have... Uh, um, developers, you have everybody there come up with their ideas or turning multiplayer board games into solo playthroughs just off of just their, they're just a smart group of people that know what they're doing. So like I said, go visit them and they know so much about solo board gaming. It is crazy and I love going to that page, seeing what someone has done or what they've done or what game they played that day. If I've made any mistakes in this place, playthrough please let me know in the comments below feedback is always appreciated and once again this is gaming solo have a great day and thank you for joining us